Mac is swimming 20 yards from a straight shoreline when he hears cries for help coming from a campsite 100 yards down shore. Anxious to help, he swims at an angle towards the shore in the general direction of the campsite. He can swim 2 yards per second and run 5 yards per second. We want to write a function to model the time it takes for Mac to arrive at the campsite for help. So there's a lot going on in this problem. You definitely want to start with some sort of a picture. And remember, you're going to have to read and then reread these problems several times uh, before you draw an accurate diagram and, and label and are able to move forward. So don't think you'll be able to read it once and just be good to go. So let me reread. He's swimming 20 yards from a straight shoreline. So let's say this is my shoreline and Mac is out here swimming. So I'll put, here's Mac, and the distance from the shoreline, it says, is 20, 20 yards. Then he hears cries for help coming from a campsite 100 yards down shore. So here we have somebody needing help, and that distance down shore is 100. Then he can swim 2 yards per second, and he can run 5 yards per second. So these values, these are not distances, but rather these are rates. These are how fast he can run and swim. So those are rates or speeds. So it says he's going to then swim at an angle, and we're not sure what the angle is. So we don't know if it's going to be a really small angle or if it's going to be a really large angle. We're not sure what the angle is, so it doesn't really matter in terms of your diagram. This is an unknown but he's going to be swimming at some sort of an angle, and then he'll reach the shore, he'll get out, and then he's going to run the rest of the way to the person who needs help. And we want to write a function to model the time it takes for him to arrive at the campsite for help. So ultimately, we need to have an equation for time. We need time is equal to something. So we have a lot of unknowns. We, we don't know the time the total time. We don't know the time that he's going to spend swimming. We don't know the time he's going to spend running. And we also don't know the distance that he'll swim or the distance he's going to run. So lots of unknowns. But we do know, we're assuming that he is going to swim at a constant rate and run at a constant rate. So we know that the relationship between distance, rate, and time is the equation distance is equal to rate times time. And if we ultimately want to write a time equation, then if we solve for time, we would divide both sides of this equation by the rate, and we'll have that the time can be found by taking the distance divided by the rate. So that's going to be important since we're ultimately looking for a function that models time. So now let's look at the distances. I don't know how far he swims. So this is an unknown. Let's give it a variable name. I'm going to use S for swim. And then I'm going to use R for the distance that he runs. So that's going to take care of the D values. And then remember, R stands for rate, and we know the rates. We know how fast he swims and how fast he runs. So now we're going to be able to uh, write some functions for time. Whoops. Sorry about that. All right, so let's talk about the time, then, that he is going to spend swimming. I'll say time swim. Well, we know that the time is going to be found by taking the distance divided by the rate. I'm going to use a little subscript here to represent this is the time spent swimming. So the distance that he's swimming, we labeled on our diagram as S, and we'll divide it by the rate at which he can swim, which was 2 yards per second. So the time spent swimming will be S over 2. Now let's do the same thing for the time that he's going to spend running. So I'll use that subscript of a little r. The time spent running will be his distance that he runs, which is r, divided by how fast he runs, his rate, which was 5 yards per second. And since we want an equation for total time, how much time is he going to spend altogether, then we're going to have to add the distance, excuse me, the time that he spends swimming to the time he spends running. So his swim time is s divided by 2, and we'll add it to his run time, which is r divided by 5. And be careful because my 5 starts to look like an s. 
So maybe you would choose a different variable instead of, instead of s, a different letter rather. Now when you take a look at this equation, you have to realize that this is an equation with two inputs. We have the input s as well as the input r. And we want to ultimately write an equation that has just one input and one output. We want an equation in a single variable is what that is called. So while this is a good equation, we have to go back to the drawing board, back to our diagram and figure out, is there another relationship that we can write uh, between s and r, the two variables in the problem? And so sometimes it helps to kind of look at your diagram and decide what have you used so far and what have you not used? And you'll notice we have not used these values of 100 and 20. And sometimes problems will give you extra information you don't need, but um, this is a good place to start if you haven't used this information at all. And it turns out there's a little geometry here because we notice that we have a right triangle formed here with 20 as one leg and S is the hypotenuse. So now could we come up with an expression for the other leg of that? triangle? And hopefully the answer is yes. So because the entire distance is 100 and we know he's running this portion which was r, then we should be able to figure out the remaining distance. And if this is a struggle for you, I always recommend that you just plug in some values. For example, let's say that um, this horizontal distance was 20. Well, then you know that his distance running would be 80. So we know we're going to take 100 minus his running distance to get this other little distance, the leg of the triangle. So let's generalize then. The whole distance is 100. We'll subtract off the distance that he runs, and what's left will be that little leg of a triangle. And then we know that the three sides of a triangle, a right triangle, are related by the Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem is going to be the leg of the triangle, 20 squared, plus the second leg, which is 100 minus r squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is s squared. And the purpose of this equation is we want to solve for one of the variables so that we can substitute into my time equation and eliminate a variable. So it doesn't matter whether you solve for r or for s, do whichever is easiest, and in this case, it'd be much more efficient to go ahead and solve for s by square rooting both sides. So we'll end up with an equation for s of s is equal to the square root. 20 squared is 400, so that's 400 plus the quantity 100 minus r squared. Now, be careful here because I have a lot of students that think that this should simplify down to, let's say, 20 plus the quantity 100 minus r. And that is, that is illegal mathematics right there. And the reason why you cannot take the square root of the, the first term and then the second term is because there indeed are two terms here inside of the radical separated by addition. And there is no such property for radicals when you have addition like that. You could only simplify in that case if you had multiplication inside the radical. And so now we're going to take this equation for s, and we are going to substitute it into my time equation. And then we'll just have an equation that has one input and one output. So we now have t is equal to the square root of 400 plus the quantity 100 minus r squared. That's all divided by 2 plus r over 5. So this is our, our model. This is our function that relates r and t. So remember, r is the distance that he runs, and t is our total time. And in fact, if you wanted to use function notation, you could say we've written t as a function of r. This would be t of r, which is the answer to part A. Write a function that models the time it takes for Mac to arrive at the campsite. So we have our, our function. Now part B asks for how far down the shore he needs to leave the water in order to reach the campsite in a minimum amount of time. 
So now here, this is the optimization part of the problem. We need to calculate the minimum amount of time. Now, at this level of math, I don't expect you to do this algebraically. I would want you to go ahead and use technology. So let's use our graphing calculators, and we want to graph this function and then calculate the minimum. So I'm going to leave that up to you. I will give you a few hints. Okay, when you are, are graphing, of course, remember on the graphing calculator, everything will be in terms of x's and y's. Just remember that our x is really the variable r, and our y is the variable t. In addition, once you graph it, and feel free to pause the video and try this first, but once you graph it on a standard viewing window, you may notice that you don't see anything. And that's because we need to adjust our window. So a few pointers. Okay, remember, if the x value is really the r value, which is the distance that he might run, um, you know that the entire length of that shore was 100 yards. So you might choose, say, 100 as an initial um, guess for your, for your x max. And then you can play with your y max as well. So please pause the video, graph this function, play with the window a little bit on your own, see if you can figure out an appropriate window that's going to let you see the minimum uh, before coming back and checking it with me. So if you were struggling at all, let me share my window with you. I had an x minimum of 0 and an x maximum of 120, a y minimum uh, of negative 10, and a y maximum of 60. And your window doesn't have to match mine perfectly. This was just one window that does work. And it lets you see on the graph that it's a decreasing function, but then eventually it does bottom out and start to swing up. So we do have this minimum that we can calculate. To calculate the minimum, just a reminder about your keystrokes, you have a trace button on your graphing calculator, and above that trace button is your calc menu. So you'll need to use your second trace keys, and then once you go to second trace, I believe it's number three that says minimum, and you'll choose number three. You'll be prompted for that left bound. Remember, the left bound just means means you need to move the, the bug on your calculator so that you're to the left of the minimum. And then the right bound requires you to move it so that you're to the right of the minimum. And then you can just press enter on the guess. And so the coordinate that I'm getting for my minimum, rounded to two decimal places, is 91.27 comma one, excuse me, 29.17. And of course the calculator returns this as x and y, but you need to label it according to the variables in your model here. So we were putting in an R value and getting out of time. So the question was asking, part B, how far down shore he should leave the water. So really, we'll be utilizing my R value here of 91.27 to answer the question. So going back to my, my diagram, then the distance that he's going to run here is 91.27 yards. So we would want Mac then to swim to shore and get out of the water at a point that's 91.27 yards from the person who's needing help.